Hi, today I want to share some thoughts with you on the power of plural. Now, plural, as most of us know, just simply means more than one. And I think you're going to find out in the next 40 minutes or so that having more than one person in your life can help you tremendously. Let me share a silly story with you that I shared a few weeks ago. There was once a, a washerman, washerman, who was a man who washes, or at least used to, wash other clothes for hire, who was raised, he was raising two donkeys. And he first called donkey A, and the other one he called donkey B. Kept it pretty simple. Donkey A felt that he was more energetic and could do better than the other donkey. He always tried to get the washerman's attention by taking more of the load and walking as fast as he could in front of him. So, you know, Donkey B was just a normal average donkey. He tried as hard as he could, but he couldn't carry as much as Donkey A or really impress the washerman by walking in front of him. So after a period of time, you see the washerman began to put pressure on Donkey B, but Donkey B couldn't meet his expectations. Eventually, Donkey B started getting punished, actually. So one day, Donkey B was crying and asked Donkey A to help. He said, dear friend, is it only the two of us? Why do we compete against each other? If we work together, we could carry an equal load at a normal speed. Donkey A became even more competitive after that. The next day, he boasted to the washerman that he could carry more and run faster than Donkey B. And he did. The washerman, as expected, became even angrier and demanded that Donkey B go even faster and punished him even when he couldn't keep up. Under the pressure, you see, Donkey B collapsed in great fatigue and quietly passed away. As a result of the collapse, Donkey A felt like he was on top of the world, having proved his superior skills and ability. But now, he also had to carry the weights of Donkey B, who had just passed away. For a short time, you see, Donkey A was able to carry both loads, but he eventually became fatigued and weak. The washerman had no compassion on this once superior but now tired donkey. He yelled and, de and demanded more, but as hard as the donkey tried, he couldn't come close to satisfying his demands. Finally, the day came when the washerman was tired of this fatigued and no good donkey now. He killed him and went searching for some other donkeys. The moral of the story is to recognize that regardless of how strong you think you are, you can't do it alone. It is important to work together. I know, it's a crazy story. But I think you and I both know that sometimes we think we're all alone and sometimes we don't really value the strengths of other people around us. I know some of us are competitive. We want to be the top. We want to be number one. But serving other people is really, really more important than being the first all the time. You and I have an opportunity to serve people. You and I have an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Michael Rogers shared a very interesting story. A team of about 35 employees had come together for a team building event. They were young and, and bright and a very enthusiastic team. However, one big problem his team had was they wouldn't share information or solutions with each other. They, the, the, so the leader felt that they were so focused on themselves and not enough on the team. So this leader, she started off with a, a fun team activity that would allow her to teach the importance of each team member working together and sharing more. She brought the team into a cafeteria and all the tables and chairs had been stacked and put away and placed around the room were, and there were more decorations and hundreds of different colored balloons. Everyone was excited, but not sure what it was all about. So in the center of the room, the room was a big box of balloons that had not been blown up yet. So the team leader asked each person to pick a balloon, blow it up, and write their name on it. But they were instructed to be careful because the balloon would pop. So a few balloons did indeed pop, and those members of the team were given another chance, but they were told if the balloon popped again, they were out of the game. So about 30 team members were able to get their balloon on a, on, you know, blown up without it popping. 
So those 30 were, they, you know, they went through the game. So five minutes later, the leader brought them back. They, they took some people out and then brought them back in. They, the leader brought them back into the room and announced that their next challenge was to find the balloon that they had left behind with their name on it, along with the other hundreds of balloons that were scattered in the whole cafeteria. So they blew up the balloons, put their name on it, left the room, came back in. So she warned them, however, to be very careful and not to pop any of the balloons. If they did, they would be disqualified. So while being very careful, they also were trying to go as quickly as they could, so each team member looked for the balloon with their name on it. And after 15 minutes, not one single person was able to find the balloon with their name on it. So the team was told that the second round of the game was over and they were moving into the third round. So in this next round, the leader told the team members to find, listen, to find any balloon in the room with a name on it and give it to the person whose name was on it. Within just a couple minutes, every member of the team had their balloon with their name on it. So the team leader made the following point, quote, listen, we are much more efficient when we are willing to share with each other. Let me share it again. We are much more efficient when we are willing to share with each other. And we are better problem solvers when we are working together, not individually. I think so many of us are tempted to try to achieve, to try to do something extraordinary all alone. When, if you know context about history and about people who've gotten really good things done, they did it through collaboration. They did, it through, they, they did it through teamwork and synergy that was able to, to push past some of the discouragements that life seems to face. It's really important for you to understand that you should not try to go through life by yourself. That you and I have to, if you will, recruit a team of people around us that can help push us forward to do the things that we need to do every single day. There's also another side, if you will, another byproduct of the power of plural and that means that sometimes that our our beliefs can be so tightly held in place that we're not going to budge on those beliefs sometimes there, there was a story that or a, a study that was done years ago about a group of people that were that were invited into a group and they were given just a simple test to tell which line on a series of lines was the longer line well, they were all told to not tell the truth in this study. They were told to say that another line or a shorter line was actually the longer line. So they brought in this other person that was not coached like the group. So in time, this happened over and over and over again, that this newbie who came into this group didn't know that the others were told to lie, and they in time were convinced that they must have been wrong, that the group must have been right. So there, there's a negative side of that too, that sometimes you and I need to, which goes kind of counter to what I'm talking about here today a little, little bit, to stand up and do the extraordinary, to be different, to set the pace, even though the crowd is going another way. And then you start a group, you start and understand the power of plural in your own life.